Hello, I'm Doug McInnes from Canterbury Christchurch University and um, for this presentation I'd like to give a brief overview uh, the, about work that colleagues and I have been doing in relation to older people and their care and treatment um, in secure mental health service. I'd like to briefly mention the research team who have been working on this. Uh, Fiona Human and Jacqueline Talent are colleagues of from Canterbury. Uh, Renska Visser was a researcher at one of the trusts that the work was carried out, but has now moved on to the University of Surrey. And Anna Parrott and Osman Hussain are clinicians uh, who are based at the South London Mental Health and Community Partnership. Um, the funding for the work has received to bottom is Oxley's NHS Foundation Trust, which is uh, one of the South London Mental Health Trusts providing forensic services. Um, um, and the other is the South London Mental Health and Community, also known as the SLP, um, which is a collaborative partnership which aims to develop joint working, sharing some operational responsibilities and, and good practice. And this was where the study was carried out. Um, within the three mental health trusts that formed the SLP, which meant that we had a sort of bigger and more extensive group of service users within the services that we could potentially um, examine and uh, give a broader overview of and, and treatment and, and some of the issues that surrounded the care and treatment of older people in secure mental health services. In terms of forensic services themselves, um, forensic services basically work with uh, people who have um, clear mental health problems, but also as well actually have, um, are, are involved normally within the criminal justice system, which their criminal activity is related to mental health problems. As such, services have a, a bit of a balancing act because they're dual role in the sense that they actually are uh, trying to um, be therapeutic and to address some of the mental health difficulties that people may well have. But at the same time, there is a, a, a clear public duty to in, in terms of protection and ensure that the, sort of the general public are safe. And at times, this, this is a very much balancing act. There are three types of uh, inpatient facility for forensic mental health services, uh, and they're usually known as high, medium, or, or low. Uh, the high security is, is quite a small proportion now, but it's, it, it, it um, is based around the, the special hospitals of Broadmarsh, etc. Medium and low secure are much more, there are many more people uh, availing themselves of those facilities. And medium security units, such as the, the route that I'm going to try and, and focus on most in, in the discussion, um, medium secure units are um, provide high physical precision and runnel security measures than, than would be seen in, in general psychiatric units, in psychiatric intensive care units and, and low secure wards. And so there is a fair amount of this um, security. And, and then, although there's a it's not a, um, a clear definition between the, the, the three groups. Media care units were initially envisaged as providing care for those people who pose a serious danger to the public. So why focus on this uh, particular cohort of service users? Um, I think what needs to be acknowledged is that when uh, the regional secure unit service was, was developed um, in the 1970s, early 1980s, it was envisaged, A, that they would be only sort of caring for people for 18 months, two years, and, and that would be it. And also as well, that the main focus and, and, and what was envisaged would be the main focus would be that actually they would have a relatively young of, of clients. And Jenny Edwards and, and her team, when they looked at the the first 233 admissions to a, a, a in, in London from between 80, 1983 to 1996, actually found the mean age was around 31. That the vast majority you know, were under 50, and only less than 7% were over 50. 
likewise um when Max Rutherford and Connor Duggan did their uh, review of forensic provisions in England and West Sainsbury Centre in 2007, they found that only 4% of people who were using the services were over over 65. Now, move on to 2019, and when we looked at um, one service in London, uh, we found that around 25% of inpatients were to do. So obviously the the, uh, uh, there, are, there are greater numbers now uh, uh, of people who are who are um, el more older services, and this is reflected as well in prison services. Uh, and actually, there may well be complex needs, mental and physical needs, that actually the services are geared up to provide. And actually, the only services that really are able to do that, in, in, in especially in an inpatient facility, are the independent care sector. So we So what we did was we um, developed a qualitative piece of work that uh, as we wanted to look at what um, the experiences of people who are older um, in secure mental health services, what their views and experiences. I mean, one of the problems we had was actually how do you define older within, and there's, there doesn't seem to be any any clear definition from, from that. Um, we were aware that uh, from extensive studies actually particularly physical health problems are you know extensively more uh, present at people that have um, had long-term mental health problems but also as well those that have been incarcerated for long period, for long periods of time so we took as a sort of a, uh, a kind of, um, straightforward view that we take say 50 and over so we looked at people who were 50 and older and we we um with participants and through observations and interviews we got some ideas of what their uh, experiences were and and the, and obviously one of the things that we found was that they um they were aware of uh, of the fact that there were groups that were different to them and actually the, the, uh, they would quite often um, want to actually have do things that were slightly different to others within within the unit the units but one of the big things that we found was this issue in relation to how they moved out of services and actually there was a big problem for them to when if they were being discharged or being or, uh, or transferred to um, a, a different facility um, and that that was about the fact that there was a much uh, greater reduction in the type of accommodation that they could access um, there was a, 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 for quite a lot of um, surveys of patients they really had didn't have a clear sense of actually how long they would be in the service have made planning quite difficult they also didn't actually have clearly about where they'll be going to because there were actually so many so few uh, places available there was also as well a, a, a real concern about the fact that they didn't feel that they were able to make a choice and that also that what that meant was that quite often they would find out they moved on or there was a potential discharge or transfer very near to the time that uh, that they, uh, um, they were due to leave and this created problems quite a lot of, of, of them were uh, people who had been in uh, the forensic system and in that for quite a long time and that actually formed quite good relationships with with their peers with certain staff and actually that was quite a wrench and actually not having that ability to move on and to actually so you know in in, in in a gradual way was really problematic for them so that's why Following on from this, we developed a uh, mixed method study to explore uh, in greater depth the issues surrounding uh, moving out of uh, secure facilities for, for older people. We also as well um, changed our criteria in terms of what, what, were, 
what the group that we were looking at and made it uh, 60 or uh, age 60 and over um, because we wanted to actually clearly understand if there were particular issues surrounding um, physical health issues maybe mental health, uh, deterioration as well cognitive deterioration and actually how this may have may work well but also as well that um, there was a sense that actually 60 plus seemed a, re a more reasonable um, definition of what could be considered older within uh, forensics or uh, within a medium secure unit. We put we put forward a, a mixed methods design um, in two phases. The first phase is, which is what I'm just going to mention now, and that's a, sur a survey of services in the South London area, exploring the health and social care needs and destination of discharge for, for service users aged 60 or over. And the second phase, which we are just going through um, ethics at the moment, is actually looking at more in depth at service users aged over 60 who either have been discharged within the last year or so, or are actually um, are likely to be discharged in the in the twelve month period coming up. Um, and so, what the, the 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 proposal is that we would then follow them and, and also talk with key workers, relatives, etc., about their views and experiences of either moving away from forensic services or actually remaining on a forensic. Then uh, there, there there are discussions about about their potential um, transfer or discharge. In terms of the survey, what we wanted to really do is just actually get a, cl a clear sense of um, the number of, of people over 60 using forensic mental health services in South London, looking at some of the social demographic characteristics and also looking at what where where they were going to and getting, getting some sense of of, of um, where they were going to uh, it, we, as um, in relation to this what we uh, were going to do and what we thought would be a very easy uh, way of getting things would be just to get um, information which is centrally held now by the SLB um, about all service users aged 60 and resign medium secure services and that would be over a four year period between um, 2016 and 2020. And we were recording a, a large number to get a clear sense of maybe some of the issues that might be surrounding why people, uh, uh, the, the characteristics of the people there, but also what may be influencing whether or not they were able to uh, transition out of, or there were difficulties in transitioning out of um, the medium secure, secure unit. I'm going to talk about the findings in a descriptive way um, and the reason for that is that we've only just got access to all of the data that we need um, and so uh, there is still some ongoing analysis being undertaken. Um, we did get affected by the coronavirus and, not, and, and having, getting access to the information but also we found that quite a lot of it was not centrally stored and so we uh, had to go to individual units, individual wards um, and that took quite a lot of time, in fact it took over six months. Um, so that, that's put us back. So that, um, I'm going to talk just in general terms about some of the sort of things that we've, we've found. There were 58 service users identified. Um, and they ranged in age from 60 to 85. They, most of them had quite long forensic histories with one over 50 years. Uh, predominantly men, um, which 91%, um, which is probably higher than the, uh, the overall proportion in the SLP services. And nearly two thirds were, were white British. And that is a higher proportion than would be uh, within the overall three uh, MSUs in South London. In terms of their admission histories, what we found that with Hibes basically, there was those that were had a long and continuous stay um, um, and had been in, in, in forensic services in one form or another for quite a long time. 
and there were also those that actually had had period admissions. They had actually, you know, they'd had a, a, been admitted to forensic facilities, uh, mental health units, oh, you know, for quite a long period of time, and had been discharged, but had then been recalled or committed another offence. And they took out, the, they were the vast majority of people. New admissions were very, very rare. In fact, there was less than 5% of what we found so far that are, that are actually new. So the grouping that we've got are actually are actually long, long term people who are actually uh, using forensic services. Most are in part the Mental Health Act, you know, restriction orders. Um, a long history of offending. Um, um, they also had a wide range of comorbidities. Uh, the vast majority were, were, were actually sort of diagnosed as having serious, serious enduring mental health problems with um, substance misuse problems. Very few were actually uh, viewed as having uh, a personality disorder. Um, when going through the case, the majority was still considered as being of a high risk, and that was slightly. Um, we were slightly surprised by that because we thought that maybe some of the issues might be about there, uh, that there were no no appropriate facilities for them, and so that's why they were staying. But quite a lot were actually considered still to be a, to be a real uh, potential risk to, to to the general public, and actually some of those that had, be, had that those that had actually been uh, transferred out and actually be um, uh, reoffended had actually, you know, they were serious incidents that they they they'd been involved with. Physical health issues were, I think, the vast majority um, had quite significant mental health problems, either dementia or cognitive decline, um, which seemed to be. Um, the, um, Facing quite a number of them, also heart disease, COPD, and diabetes. So, there were, you know, major physical health issues. We found that 21 were discharged or transferred uh, during the period of 11 were discharged. Um, the majority were to independent accommodation. Uh, and all those that would transfer to an elderly low secure or to the private care sector um, should say that actually in terms of this, there were mainly two providers who uh, were actually providing this service. So although the, 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 you know, it looks as though there were a number of maybe different options, actually the options were quite small. They were, they were a small grouping uh, uh, that, or group of facilities that they can transfer out to. So what was some our main interpretations currently are on the screen now. Um, it seems the majority of service users that are older have been receiving forensic mental health services for a, a, a fairly long period. It's also um, apparent that a fair number of these are actually still viewed as actually having a, a substantial level of risk. Now that in addition to um, their mental health needs, their physical health needs and cognitive deterioration does present challenges in terms of, uh, of finding appropriate places for moving on. Um, there are limited places, they are almost exclusively independent and there doesn't be a me medium secure unit elderly specialist area. So that presents lots of challenges in terms of discharge and hopefully um, in greater detail in the second part of our uh, of our study. And it just uh, leaves me to say thank you for listening. If if anyone wishes to contact me about the study, please feel free. Thank you.